Hi, if you found this video, I'm going to assume that either you or someone you care about is currently considering whether to have an amputation or to have some sort of limb salvage procedure. So let me start with the headline. I have been an amputee for over 30 years, and in that time that I've had a limb difference, I have met literally hundreds of other amputees, and I've met almost as many people who have had limb salvage procedures. I have met maybe two or three who are happy with their decision to have limb salvage. I have met many, many people with limb salvage situations who wish they had an amputation or eventually have an amputation. Conversely, amongst all of the amputees I've ever met, I have never, not once, never, not once had an amputee tell me, I wish I'd had a limb salvage procedure. I wish I'd tried to save my leg or my hand. But in the next few minutes in this video, I want to try to present to you why amputation was the right choice for me and why I think uh, it offers a lot of advantages that might not readily be apparent to you at this point. But where are my manners? I haven't even introduced myself. Hi, I'm Josh Sundquist. I am a Paralympian, a best-selling author, producer of an Emmy award-winning streaming series about my childhood, and a Halloween enthusiast as you might have noticed uh, from my uh, Halloween costumes in the background. Perhaps you've come across them on the internet. Quick caveat before we go any further. Obviously, I'm not a doctor. This is not medical advice. This is just my opinions and observations and experiences as a person who had a tumor. I was diagnosed with Ewing's sarcoma, a rare form of bone cancer, when I was nine years old. I had a tumor in my left femur. Before I um, found out I had cancer, I thought everyone died from cancer. And now I know that there are lots of people that survive from cancer and I have a whole different view on what it is. I had a 50% chance to live. I was on chemotherapy for about three months. The chemotherapy didn't shrink the tumor, so there needed to be some sort of surgical intervention. I could, as far as limb salvage, have had my, uh, my cancerous femur removed, have a titanium rod put in, I could have had a cadaver bone put in, could have had a uh, rotational plasty. But ultimately, I felt that amputation was the right choice for me, as did my parents, because of the inherent um, mobility limitations ironically that come with limb salvage the the cancer was surrounded or had spread into the surrounding muscle substantially so I would have lost a, a lot of my quads and hamstring uh, along with the bone um, but not only that a, a metal bone is never going to be anywhere near as strong or resilient as a real bone and so I, I remember asking a uh, a very respected surgeon uh, well if I have this this limb salvage surgery could I play any sports and he said, you might, you might be able to play horse with your friends. In other words, you could stand in a stationary position and shoot baskets, but you, you couldn't run, you couldn't do anything that would uh, you know, result in, in high stress to, to that limb because uh, it, it could very likely rupture or fracture or result in all sorts of different complications. In, in my observation, people with, uh, who, who have a, a limb salvage operation are uh, severely limited in their mobility, despite the appearance, if you would look at them and say, oh, they have all four limbs intact, they probably get around way better than someone like me, who is missing a leg, who uses crutches or a prosthesis. Uh, in reality, it's the opposite. Uh, I know I visually present as severely disabled, but functionally speaking, I, um, I, well, let me say it this way, and this is gonna be hard, I think, for you to understand and perhaps believe at this juncture in your journey or the journey of the person that you care about, but 30 years out from my amputation, I honestly rarely think about how I'm an amputee. Like, it rarely occurs to me throughout the course of the day, oh, I have one leg, uh, because I'm just, I'm just used to it, and it's just not as big a deal as it would seem. Now, right after the amputation, huge deal. You have to relearn everything. How to get in the tub, how to get in a car, how to get in and out of bed, when you use crutches, do you want a prosthesis, what kind of prosthesis do you want? Uh, and that, that physiological uh, and neurological journey is, is certainly um, measured in years, not, not months or weeks. Um, but it is a journey that does, uh, in my experience, come to a point where you are uh, potentially 
able to be so adjusted that it just it just is such a it's just a part of your life that that doesn't even occur to you except when other people point it out or except in my case where uh, today part of my job is I do stand-up comedy uh, much of which relates to having one leg and I give motivational speeches in which I talk about some of these things from my background so uh, in terms of of, of, of what you might see of me publicly, it might seem like being an amputee is a really big part of my life. It is not a, a significant part of my life inside, in my mo own mind, on a daily basis. To continue my story, I had the amputation. I was on chemotherapy for a year, um, but, I, but I finished the treatment, and I was fortunate that my cancer didn't relapse after that. And, uh, and, and that leads me to another reason why the amputation felt like the right choice for me, because I knew it was the best chance I had to get rid of the cancer, right? It, it was the, the, the highest probability of removing the most cancerous tissue from my body uh, was getting rid of the limb entirely as opposed to, uh, to trying to save it at the potential expense of perhaps some, some cancer in the surrounding tissue that, um, that wasn't removed in the surgery. I've had a really good outcome and I recognize uh, unusually so, both, um, both physically, uh, psychologically, uh, and socially. Um, I credit my parents for that, uh, a great upbringing. I credit uh, incredible friends that I had around me for that. And I credit, um, I guess, na natural athletic genes, you know, from my, my parents and my grandfather, which helps me with balance and with my mobility. I was able, in fact, to, to become a ski racer. Uh, when I was a teenager, I trained as a ski racer for a number of years, and eventually I competed as a member of the U.S. Paralympic ski team. Later in my adulthood, I played on the U.S. amputee soccer team. I played in several World Cups in a sport called amputee soccer, where everyone plays on crutches and everyone has one leg. Today, I've, I've grown up. I am uh, in, in my house. I, uh, I am married. I have a son. Uh, he just, at the time I'm recording this, just turned one years old. I would say I'm, I'm a gainfully employed, adjusted adult. Which is to say, when I was considering whether or not to lose my leg, and I think that this is part of the bias that people have against amputation, I thought, if I have one leg, how could I get a job? How could, would I ever be able to be in a romantic relationship or, or just do normal things in life? And I, it wasn't until I met and saw other amputees who were 10, 20, 30 years older than me who were adjusted, who had jobs or girlfriends or wives or cars, right? When I saw them, I said, oh, I can do that. Oh, being an amputee is a way to function in the world. Limb salvage first, pros, cons. Pros, of course, it's that you get to save your leg or your arm, that you, um, your body, uh, from, from the outside at least, appears intact. Cons. You would be shocked at how often I hear from people who say, I had limb salvaged five years or 10 years ago, and I've had so many problems with the salvaged leg that I'm now getting an amputation, or I'm now considering an amputation, or my surgeon is now recommending an amputation. It's not the same leg or arm that you had before. Uh, it has a, an artificial bone put in it, right? It has less muscle. If you are growing, you have to have like two or three surgeries every year to lengthen the rod. You're prone to infection. You're prone to injury. So I, I often observe that people who have these they feel so uh, immobile and thus they end up having an amputation many years later. But there are new technologies and options being developed all the time. For example, one thing that didn't exist back when I had my amputation is now you can have a telescoping rod put in uh, in place of your bone. And instead of having surgery uh, to lengthen it when you grow, you put your limb inside of a magnetic coil and it grows without having to cut you open, which is an amazing and fantastic advancement. That said, that option, like any kind of um, you know rod or plate put in in place of your bone, on average will fail uh, every 10 years. In, in other words, in one way or another, on average, after 10 years, uh, it will need to be replaced 
uh, completely requiring uh, another surgery. If limb salvage is, is so hard, why is anyone getting it? Why are doctors recommending it? Well, first of all, patient preference. Obviously, if you come to someone and say, would you rather have four limbs or three, everyone would rather have four limbs. So we as patients have an inherent bias and a healthy one uh, towards preserving our body. But I think surgeons can have the same bias, uh, potentially even more so, because you get into medicine to try to help people, to try to save them, to try to save their bodies. So for some surgeons, having to resort to amputation represents a last line of defense, a sort of failure of medicine. And that's certainly not to knock surgeons. Surgeons are amazing and wonderful people and very smart, and my surgeon saved my life. So if you have what you know is a great surgeon, and that surgeon is telling you that you are an excellent candidate for limb salvage, you should believe them. Because obviously there are times when limb salvage is going to be the best choice. My goal in making this video is certainly not to talk you out of limb salvage. I just want to make sure that you are not biased against amputation to begin with. And part of the other reason for the popularity of limb salvage is parents. As parents, we have a bias, a very healthy bias, a very loving bias toward wanting what's best for our kids. And we tend to imagine that what's best for their our kids is for their bodies to stay intact the way that they are now. Most poignantly, I remember years ago, there was a, a boy who died of cancer. He had a tumor similarly to me in his leg. And I saw an interview with his mom later, and she said, we had the option for his leg to be amputated. So we could have done that. Instead, we did the limb salvage, because if he had had the amputation, what kind of life would that have been? And I heard that, and I was like, Wow. I mean, first of all, as a person who has grown up with an amputation, I, I would say, what kind of life? I don't know, a pretty normal one, potentially. Like, you know, one where you maybe do whatever, you don't know, go to college or get married or have kids if that's what you want. Like, I, it's, it, and now granted, she was obviously grieving and that is, is probably, um, you know, a story that she needs to hold on to, to, to uh, to feel that her, she and her family made the right decision. So I get that and I don't, I don't fault her for that. Okay, now let's talk about amputation. Cons, a physical disability. Now I would argue you're definitely gonna have a physical disability with limb salvage too. Um, it's just not visible. My disability is visible. Chances are um, that you will have more of a residual limb than I do. I have my leg amputated very, up, uh, very high up here. I have what's called a hip disarticulation. If you have a hip disarticulation or a hemipelvectomy, um, I, my observation is that most people at this level don't use an, uh, a prosthesis, but this is very rare. This is like a few percentages uh, of, of all the amputees. Most amputees have more of a leg or more of an arm. Now, if you're, uh, you know, have more of a leg, almost certainly you would wear a prosthesis um, and, and almost certainly you should. It's almost certainly the best mobility option for you. In that regard, if you're wearing long pants, particularly if you have you know, a leg that extends below your knee, you won't walk with a limp even. You'll run at the same level that you used to run. It will be far less visible and far less uh, of an impairment to your mobility than it might seem um, from the juncture where you're sitting right now. But probably the biggest pro of amputation to me and what appealed to me most when I was making this decision for myself is that with amputation, your destiny in terms of mobility is in your own hands. What I mean is with limb salvage, you will medically be very limited in terms of the sort of athletic activities that you'll be allowed to safely participate in. Whereas as an amputee, certainly uh, you will have a significant mobility impairment, whether you're using a prosthesis or using crutches, or if you're an upper limb amputee, you will have uh, the, the impairment of, of only having one biological hand. However, there will be no medical limitations on what you can and cannot do. What you can do is simply a matter of what you're physically able to figure out how to do as an amputee. And while I won't try to tell you that I don't have any limitations as a result of my disability, I certainly do. I do have the ability to participate in the vast majority of activities that interest me. I played uh, several sports at an elite level, uh, which you can do uh, as an amputee, or you can play sports at a casual level. If you or loved one is facing amputation, my recommendation is start now 
um, to get involved in some sort of adaptive sports program in your community. Now, you might say, Josh, I don't play sports. Doesn't matter. Go hang out with the, with the athletes. Like, go hang out with the amputees who, are, who have figured it out, who are, who are healed psychologically and physiologically to the point that they are whatever they're doing running triathlons, playing wheelchair basketball, playing wheelchair rugby, whatever it is, be around those people because we all become like the people we hang out with. So whether or not you play the sports, get involved, hang out, meet adaptive athletes. If they don't exist in your community, uh, and, and my guess is they probably do, but if they don't, uh, the internet exists and you can plug into adaptive sports communities on social media and on the web. Okay, let's talk about the data. I like to think of myself as kind of like a science and math fan. I enjoy research. So I've read, I think, all of the medical journal articles about limb salvage versus amputation. I'll put a link and a folder underneath this video if you want to read uh, some of these scientific papers for yourself. When we look at the comparison between limb salvage and amputation, we're wondering about several things. We're wondering about survivorship. Uh, we're wondering about uh, functionality, that is how able are you to physically do things afterward and we're also wondering just generally about other psychosocial outcomes um, how happy are you how socially adjusted are you um, that sort of thing on the whole when we look across all of the studies between limb salvage and amputation it's a pretty it's pretty split to be honest like for every study that says one is slightly better another study will say the other is slightly better in that attribute and so for that reason uh, the general consensus seems to be that they're they're pretty equal in terms of most outcomes the one measurement that is way different of course is that people who have limb salvage are typically like three or four times more likely to have corrective surgeries later as compared to people who have an amputation. Survival or lifespan after a limb salvage or amputation for people with tumors is typically thought to be about equal. If anything, survival is actually slightly higher for people with limb salvage. Now, I would say looking carefully at the data, that's not because of something inherently better about limb salvage. That's because of the people who have limb salvage on average are different than the people who have an amputation. In statistics, this is what's called a confounding variable. Specifically, in this case, people who have an amputation are on average uh, likely to have a, a, a bigger tumor. They are likely to have a tumor that is more advanced, uh, like say you know, stage four instead of stage two cancer. They are likely to be older. They are more likely to be poor and they are more likely to not have health insurance as compared to people who have limb salvage. Now, if you know anything about health and medicine, you know that all of those things I just listed are associated with worse health outcomes. And good research tries to control for those variables, but when there's that many variables uh, skewing on one side, it's kind of impossible to imagine that you have con controlled for all of them. I also think that there's a major research flaw in the way that a lot of these studies are conducted. For all of the resources about being an amputee, if you haven't already found it, you should check out the Amputee Coalition of America. I'll also humbly suggest some of my own content and resources to you. I have literally thousands of videos on the internet. I also have a streaming series. It's a great show to watch together as a family. It's called Best Foot Forward. It's on Apple TV+. I've also written five books. Um, the first one is called Just Don't Fall, and the fifth one is a young reader's version of the first one. Thanks for sticking with me for such a long video. I wish you or your loved one all the best as you make this decision together and as you look toward what I hope is a bright future.